Hello there everyone. I am making this video to serve as a tutorial for how to most seamlessly deliver your lecture classes uh, just the same as if you would normally to a room full of students, uh, whether those students are in the room or not, and also record that lecture so that if students cannot log on and catch your lecture uh, at the time you're delivering it, they can watch it later. I am doing this through Blackboard, which is certainly not the only solution. We could use Microsoft Teams, we could use Google Hangouts, which has been made free during this time, we could use WebEx, we could use Zoom. There are a lot of other platforms that are available, and if you have used one of those platforms successfully, then I encourage you to continue doing so and providing your students with links to those webinars slash recordings. I'm providing this as an option primarily because it's through Blackboard, which students already are using, hopefully. The recordings that you make will be behind a firewall, so there are no copyright issues and because we all have access to it and there are no storage issues. So the first step, of course, is logging into Blackboard and going to your course. Then the first thing that I suggest you do and do this only once is to add a link for yourself and for your students to Blackboard Collaborate Ultra in your link bar area by going to the plus sign, adding a tool link, naming it whatever you'd like, but something along the lines of online lectures. And then the type is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. If you would like to just do this and test it out first and not make it available to your students, do not check this box. Uh, however, if you do want to make it available to students, then go ahead and check the box. When you submit, it will add your new link down at the bottom and you can uh, drag and drop to move it higher up if your computer mouse cooperates better than mine does. And so I'm going to move mine to above my online office hour. So there it is. Now when you click on your online lecture link, you will go to Blackboard Collaborate Ultra the same way as you would if you scrolled down, went to Course Tools, expanded Course Tools, and went down to Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. The only point of adding this link is that it's readily available to you and your students, but you could access it through the Course Tools as well. Once you are on the Collaborate Ultra screen, Every class has been provided with a course room, which is always available and unlocked. This is where you can deliver your lectures. Once you have delivered your lectures, they will be available through clicking on the hamburger menu here and going to recordings. Sessions is for if you schedule a weekly online office hour as I have for this class. When you click on recordings, they're all of the recordings for my classes because I regularly uh, uh, webcast this class and record it for students. Um, all of your recordings are there. You can click on any recording and rename it if you want to have it, say, have the chapter in it, but they are all coded with the time and date of the recording. So if you're just in a hurry and don't feel like renaming things, you certainly don't need to. Students can find the class by its uh, record date and time. Navigating back to the session screen is where your course room is. So when you are ready to deliver your lecture, you will need either your laptop that has a webcam on it or to bring your own webcam since the college doesn't provide them for us and plug it into the podium if you are lecturing from the podium in the room. If you're at home, then of course you just can use your uh, laptop at home. You need not record yourself if you want to hide and just do audio like I'm doing on this uh, recording. And uh, you can share your screen alone or don't share your screen, which is uh, what I'm going to show you how to do. When you enter the course room, 
Um, there are many options available here on the right hand side. There's an anonymous dial in so students could phone in. There is a guest link so that students could watch your lecture without logging into Blackboard at all. I'm discouraging you from using either of those options because we want our students to log in through Blackboard so that we know that they are attending and we don't want this just random link flying around out there but the option is there for you. You will join your course room which will open up a separate window. Even at times of low Blackboard usage, this can take a few minutes. You will need to provide access to your camera and your microphone. It will test it for you, uh, not only the first time, but pretty much every time you do this. And uh, it will test the audio and video as well. Hi, now you can see me. So, from the screen that you've accessed now, even though it has tested your audio and video, you need to enable it. So you need to share your audio with your webcasted classroom and you need to share your video if you are choosing to do so with your classroom. The first thing after activating your audio and video that I suggest you do is to go to the hamburger menu in the upper left hand corner. You can see now I have an audio preview here. You go to the hamburger menu and start recording so that the recordings can be watched later for students who have not been able to attend live and so that you um, have a recording that students can watch again if they so desire. So you would start the recording. And there we go. I'm going to disable my video so that you don't have to stare at my living room. The menu in the lower right hand corner you will probably not use again unless you are choosing to, for example, share, middle button here, your screen. There is no need to share your PowerPoint file with your students. If you were giving a handout in class, you could share a file this way so that they actually have it. But if you are wanting students to see your PowerPoint, Again, what I'm suggesting you do is have your webcam or your laptop pointing at the classroom that you would normally be lecturing in and lecture completely normally. And the students will see the PowerPoint that you are broadcasting on the screen because they're looking at you lecturing just as if you would be normally in a classroom full of students. If you are doing a voiceover like this video and want your students to see the PowerPoint that is playing on your computer screen, then share your screen and play your PowerPoint file on your computer. You can use the drawing function of the PowerPoint uh, slideshow to mark up your slides just like you would normally. But again, the point of this video is so that you can lecture completely standardly as if you're standing in your classroom and at least currently they're not planning on closing the college. So you can go to your classroom and lecture completely normally to a empty classroom of students who are logging on and watching your lecture via webcast or watching the recording of it later. So share your full screen would be my advice. You can share just windows and just applications. However, if you're using PowerPoint, that can get buggy where it shares the PowerPoint application and not the slideshow. Again, I wanna keep this as simple as possible. So I strongly encourage you to just lecture in front of your uh, PowerPoint slideshow on the screen in your classroom as usual rather than sharing your screen and trying that because it can be a little bit like rubbing your head and patting your stomach if you haven't done it before. And we want to make this as seamless as possible and as easy as possible for uh, faculty who are not traditionally teaching online. If you have questions after watching this video, please see Dennis or anyone else in the uh, Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, or you can certainly email me, kcolak at qcc.cuny.edu.